Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's another in the series where I'm trying to learn this game, Atlantic Chase, designed by Jeremy White and published by GMT Games, by just using the tutorials. And this is the last in this tutorial series because we have reached tutorial 10. So let's have a look at that. Here we are, tutorial 10, break back. And this tutorial will finally teach us how to use the battle rules. And for this, we are told to read a few pages, 55 to 62, and look back at the leaders, because this time we're going to be using a couple of those, Forbes and Marshall. Tutorial 10, break back. October 1939. While attempting to test the North Sea blockade, Admiral Marshall has just been confronted by an armed merchant cruiser, the Rawal Pindi. No doubt its captain has signalled the home fleet, so now Marshall is keen to return his two battle cruisers to Wilhelmshaven. His standing orders are to avoid engagement with equal or superior force. So quite a lot going on here. We are the Germans and we have been successfully engaged to battle by the Rawal Pindi there and they've contacted the home fleet. So that tells me that the British have the initiative and our aim as the Germans is to get this task force back to a German port here. So let's have a close up of the task forces. So. In this task force, we've got the Nelson and the Rodney and the heavy cruiser, the Dorsetshire there. And on the Nelson, we have Forbes himself, and he will give the sort of ability of allowing us to change one die roll into a six. The other Task force here contains the battleship Warspite, another task force here with two cruisers, the Glasgow and the Aurora. Down here we've got the Newcastle, another heavy cruiser, and this destroyer squadron is representing the Rawal Pindi. For us as the Germans, we've got this task force with the two battle cruisers, Gneisenau and the Scharnhorst. And on the Gneisenau, we have Marshall himself, who gives a similar ability by allowing us to change one die roll into a six. We can use Marshall's ability whenever we like, but the rules say that the British have to use Forbes' ability at the earliest opportunity. The tutorial begins by resolving this battle that the Rawal Pindi has initiated. So for the first time, let's get over to the battle board. Up here we have the Rawal Pindi and down here our task force. Normally during battle, the forces set up in the far zones. There is an opportunity for one side to be nearer the other and therefore get a better shot if they surprise the other task force. But no, this is just a sort of normal setup. So they're both at the far regions. Because it's bad weather, there will be two rounds of battle. If the weather is good, there'll be three. And this fourth round, I believe, is used for the advance rules. A battle round consists of four phases. Hope you can see that. Gunnery, torpedo, maneuver, and breakaway. So the first phase is gunnery, and uh, there are four ranges for gunnery. There is extreme, long, short, and point blank range. And that depends, of course, which zone we're in on the battle board. We're both far, and on the board is printed a handy little gunnery ranges table. So we'll have a quick look at that. 
here we are. So if both forces are in the far areas, that's extreme range, and the ship that's firing will throw three dice and pick the lowest two. If one's in the far and the other is in the near zone, that's classed as long, along with far and close. And that's just a basic two dice roll. Near and near is also a basic two die roll, but near and close and close and close is point blank. We throw three dice and pick the highest two. Now we know what the gunnery ranges are, let's just remind ourselves what these numbers on the ships mean. There are two numbers printed here. The first one is the die roll modifier we apply at short and point blank range. And the second number is the die roll modifier applied for long and extreme range. However, some ships like our Raoel Pindi here has an NA not applicable, which means it cannot fire at long range. So it looks like the poor old Raoel Pindi is in for a bit of a shock. So we'll move that there ready. And the other thing about the Raoel Pindi, it'll only take one hit to sink it. Gunnery results are applied simultaneously. So even if a ship is sunk by an enemy's gunnery, because it's simultaneous, the other side will have a chance to fire its guns before it goes to its watery grave. Let's try the Gnauser now there. We're gonna roll three dice and we're gonna take the lowest two. Oh, it's a six is the actual die roll. And now we apply the modifiers. And here's the modifier table. You can see it's split into two gunnery and torpedo. So those two numbers, the first ones, are applying to our gunnery. Target is very slow. No, target is slow though. Yes, it is. So we get a plus one for that. No smoke, we might see that later on. And attacker's gun value. As I said before, it's gonna be the second number, the two, because we are extreme range. So we get another plus two. So our total dice roll with the modifiers is nine. And now we look on the gunnery table for the result. And as you can see, this result of nine will give us a hit. And the poor old Raoel Pindi is sunk. Because there are no more ships to battle, we return to the operational map. So that battle is over. And this was the task force station representing the Rawal Pindi and is now removed from the game, unfortunately. Any surviving task force that return to the operational map will get a contact marker. So our task force gets one of those. And just to finish off, once the battle's finished, both sides vie for initiative. As I said before, because the Rawal Pindi initiated the battle, we must assume the British had the initiative. So we're trying to take it away from them. Or <laughs> only just the British keep the initiative. We move this up here, move that down. So we don't roll for weather, but we're gonna roll on the little table here on the bad weather and see what happens. Five, that's an E, that's an engage action. The British perform an engage action, select a German task force station as the target. The active task force will be the British task force with Forbes in it or the war spite, whichever is closer. So it will be Forbes. If neither has a trajectory segment or station in the target's hex, 
the British perform a trajectory action first, because as you probably remember, an engage action can be done by an active task force uh, station or trajectory, but the target has to be a station. So they're going to perform a trajectory action. So there is some more about conducting signals or naval searches, but that's only if the German task force isn't a station, and that will be conducted by the Newcastle. But we are a station, so I read it like that we have to do a trajectory action with Forbes's task force to try and engage and battle us. So let me know if this isn't correct. This is my first time doing this, so I'm bound to make some mistakes. Here we go. And they're going in there. But because they've gone into our hex with a station, they will get an intel marker. They will now try and do their engage action, but because they do have an intel marker, we can interrupt. For that, we look to see how many intel markers are on that trajectory. It's one, of course. And then we roll on the interruption table. So let's see what we get. They get a five. Let's have a quick look at the interruption table. Forbes's task force has one Intel marker on it. We threw a five. So they now get a minus one to their engage action. So let's see what happens now with a minus one. 11, <laughs> 11 with a minus one, 10 of course. Let's go and see what that means. The trajectory total was two, and with a 10. Battle, oh dear, here we go. So here we are on the battle board. We've got two rounds of battle, and the two task forces start off in their respective far zones. Marshall is a little bit worried because his standing orders were not to engage equal or superior force. So he may well try and break away and skedaddle back to port if he possibly can. So the first thing we do is gunnery. And I think we'll have the British go first. Remember, any damage incurred won't be applied until after the gunnery phase because combat is simultaneous. So we're going to throw three dice and pick the two lowest. And the rules say that Forbes' ability will be used at the earliest opportunity. Oh, six. Well, I think we will use Forbes for the Royal Navy because that will turn that into a six. They're attacking the Gneisse now, by the way. Makes sense. That's the German flagship. So there we go. That's gone. They have a 10. Now we look on the modifiers. Target is very slow. No. Target is slow. No. Smoke. No. So just the attacker's gun value. And if you remember, that's the number on the right here. So a two. That brings it up to 12. Oh, that's lucky. Nine to 12 is a hit. One more, it would have been two hits. I'll pop it there for a minute. So the Rodney will be attacking the Gneisse now again. Oh, it's a bit better. Seven. The only one that applies is the attacker's gun value, which for the Rodney is again a two. Oh, they've hit the Gneisse now again. Two hits, that would be flipping over in a minute. Now the Dorsetshire there, they don't have any gunnery value at long and extreme range. So let's see 
what damage, if any, they can do. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be a six. Nothing to add on. That's splash. Okay, it's our go. Should turn that over, really. Good nice and owl firing at the Nelson. That's terrible. That's three. I think we'll use Marshall's ability. Oops. But as I say, you will play this completely different. That'll make that a six. We are now at eight. Now we look at the modifiers. Target is very slow. No. Target is slow. Yes. The Nelson is slow. So we get a plus one. No smoke. And the gun value is still two because combat is simultaneous. So that's another two. So that's a total of 11. That's a hit on the Nelson. The Shan horse will do the same, firing at the Nelson. No, that's a six. Oh, I don't know though. Hold on, target is slow, plus one. And two for the gunnery value, yes. That's nine. That just gets another hit on the Nelson. And both ships are damaged. So this gets flipped. Whoops, come here. It is now very slow. Not very good gunnery values. And the Ganaisa now flips as well, whoops, because of the two damage. Slightly better. There we are. No torpedoes, even though the Dorsetshire has torpedo capability. They have to be in the close zone to fire them. So now it's maneuver. And in the rules for this tutorial, it does say... British ships on the battle board will move towards or into the close zone whenever possible and will attack using whatever gunnery and or torpedoes they have available. And they call this the Nelsonian audacity. So these will actually move down to the near zone. We're not moving. We should have done these in a certain order. The slowest ship moves first and then up to the fastest, but we're not gonna move. <laughs> so. And during this phase as well, we can produce smoke. Damaged ships can't, so this one can't. The Shan horse can make smoke. It'll give a minus one. Smoke will give an adverse modifier to I think both the target and the ship firing because uh, if we make smoke, they can't see us. But if uh, we're firing, we can't see them either very well. So as I said, the Gneissen now can't make smoke, but the Shan horse can. And a smoke counter can obscure one or two ships. So we're going to make it obscure those two. I hope that's right. Let's put it up the right way. There we are. Just in case we can't break away, which is the last phase we're going to try and break away and to do that when the other side doesn't agree we have to roll just like when we seize the initiative we have to roll a nine or more but there are some modifiers a plus two if all our ships are in the far zone so we get a plus two a minus one if you have the slowest ship no the nelson is the slowest ship and a minus one if one or more of your opponent's ships are in the near or close zone. So we only get a plus one. Here we go. Oh, boxcars. Yes, we break away and that ends the battle. These ships go back to their task force displays and we return to the operations map.
So both flagships got a bloody nose in that battle. And the British task force will also get a contact marker. We now vie for initiative. And we get a plus one as the Germans. Let's see if we can get away. We do. So what are we going to do? I think we'll try and get through all this back to Wilhelmshaven. But first, I nearly forgot, we have to roll for the weather. Yeah, the weather is now good. Oh dear, that means the airfields are open. Here we go. The contact marker stays there. And we also get an intel marker, of course, because we've made a trajectory action with an enemy station in the same hex. We'll come down here. No, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? We're going to get another intel marker for that. Come down through our own mines so that won't bother us. Into Wilhelmshaven. And I think we'll pass and do a time lapse. The task force is slow because of the Gneisenau's damage. And so we can only remove one segment that has an Intel marker. Contact goes. And we haven't shortened our trajectory very much. It is now the Royal Navy who are rolling for the weather. No, it stays good. What are they doing? Rolling on that British action table. They throw a four in good weather. They're trying to engage us again. The British perform an engage action. The active task force will be the one with Forbes or the Warspite. The task force with the Nelson in it, even though she's damaged, is still the strongest task force. So we'll use Forbes. So we'll have to do a trajectory action first, like last time, and move into. That hex. No intel, of course, because it's a trajectory. No, hold on. No, rewind. Rewind. Because that isn't a station like it was before, we have to carry on with this bit. Good job I caught that. If the Germans do not have a task force station, then the British perform a signals action and then the engage action if they still have the initiative. It says if no intel marker, the British task force containing the Newcastle performs a naval search action. Well, we do have an, an intel marker. So Forbes's task force will do a signals action. And then if they keep the initiative, an engaged action. It's all happening, there's lots to think about. So, signals, just to remind us. We're gonna remove the target's task force trajectory segments and the intel markers and put a station where that was. We're in with this as well, oh crikey. So we remove all those. Hope I'm playing this right. We're a station, no time lapse needed. Now the British are going to try and seize the initiative. Yes, it's starting to go wrong. A couple of minutes past that point that I mentioned in the video, 
I thought something's not right. I've done something wrong. Checking the video. Yes, of course, it should have been the Germans trying to seize the initiative after the signals action. Also, although it's not clear in the tutorial, I could have possibly done a trajectory action before the signals action. But as I say, it wasn't clear to do that from the AI instructions. But anyway, don't think any harm's done, but we're gonna try and seize the initiative. We need a nine, there are no modifiers. If we don't get the initiative, Forbes' task force will come and get us and perform an engage action. We do not. So now they will perform a trajectory action. Here we go. Unfortunately for Forbes, as he has performed a trajectory action with our station in the hex, they get an intel marker. So, engage action. Just to remind you, the active task force can be a station or a trajectory, but our task force has to be a station and they're in the same hex. But they do have an intel marker, so we can try and interrupt them. So we're going to roll two dice, and then we'll have a look down here at the interruption table. Six. So Forbes's task force has one Intel marker. We threw a six. So the Royal Navy is going to get a minus one on their engage action dice roll. However, before all that, because the weather is good, the British can do air support and they have a coordinating task force. So we've got to get our little counters out. So of course, this is the active task force. They are engaging us. They're launching from Scarpa Flow. And this one is coordinating. Doesn't look too good for us. So let's add up those modifiers. Air support. They are only one hex away, so that's a plus two. Contact marker. No, thankfully, we don't have a contact marker on us. There are no evasive maneuvers markers, but coordination for the active player in good weather is another plus two. No point in us launching air support because we are two hexes away. And that, of course, if you remember, nothing at all. So I've got this right. They've got a plus four at the moment, but because of the interruption, they're going to get a minus one. So we might as well take it off of there. So they've got a dice roll with a plus three. Five. Five with a plus three is eight. There is a trajectory total of three. Let's have a look at the engage table. So eight on the die roll and a trajectory total of three. Oh, I think we've got away with it. It's a red eye. Move that out of the way a minute while I tidy this up. There we go. Now this red eye is a skirmish and it's the same as contact, but if the active task force is faster than the target, the active player may initiate a limited battle. No, Forbes's task force is very slow because of the damage to the Nelson. So it's just a contact marker. Get that back again. The designated task force now has to time lapse and I think they've got a choice. 
They've got an Intel marker so they can do a time lapse and they can remove that one segment and the Intel marker. Or I think they can do a normal time lapse because being very slow, they can only remove two segments in good weather. So I think I've read that in the rules. You can do either or as long as you take off the maximum amount of segments for a normal time lapse. So what I think I'll do is take these two off, do a normal time lapse, leaving this Intel marker. My thinking is, as soon as we remove that and this task force does another trajectory action, the Intel marker is going to go back. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I, th I think I read that in the rules. Here we go then. And just to finish off, there is a VI for initiative roll. And I think I should have moved this up one from the last roll we did where the Germans didn't win the initiative. I think that's right. So vying for initiative plus one for the Germans. Look at that. A five and a three with the plus one. We have the initiative back. And I think our best option is to get the heck out of there. So we're going to do a trajectory action back to port, back to Wilhelmshaven. Through our own minefield. There we are. Now I'm thinking, oh, we can complete. But no, because we've made a trajectory action in that hex with the British station, we get an Intel marker as well. So I think the only thing we can do now is time lapse. And we're slow. So we could take them off of there if we wished, because we can take two segments off for a slow task force. But no, I think we'll get rid of that Intel marker. And for slow, we can take one off. That'll get rid of our contact marker again. This comes back, this comes back, in case we forget. And it is now the British who are going to roll for the weather. No, stays good. So what are they doing? A six. Well, it looks like they've given up the chase because a six in good weather. This P is a pass action. The British perform a pass action. The British task force with the longest trajectory performs time lapse. Remove segments farthest from the nearest German trajectory segment or station. Well, that's the only one with a trajectory, so they're going to get rid of that. That goes back there. And we roll for the weather. We're in with a chance. Stays good. And the Germans are going to try and complete now. So again, just to remind you quickly, completion six segments or less. One has to be in the port hex and no Intel marker on us. Well, there we go. But the Germans can try and seize initiative. They need a nine or more. If not, we have successfully completed and got back safely to port. No, they don't. Five. We complete. That would go up one. But we've uh, completed the tutorial. Phew. And all that's left is to look at the outcomes. How did the episode end? We had a completion. And it says, Admiral Raider is eager to receive Marshall's full report. If a German ship was sunk, Raider considers the operation a dismal failure and is not looking forward to his briefing with the Fuhrer. If a German ship was damaged, flipped, which it was, the news is less bad but still not good. It will mean the cessation 
of further operations involving surface raiders. If none was sunk or damaged, and a British battleship was damaged or sunk, he recommends Marshall for commendation, but he, no, he's not going to get any of that. The outcome of this episode means they will cease further operations involving surface raiders and go underwater. So there we are, we've reached the end of the tutorial series. Apologies for the little misplays in this and the other videos, but hopefully I've caught most of them. And I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed going through the tutorials and sharing them with you. And I hope you enjoyed them and you got something out of them as well. Next step, of course, is playing a scenario. So <laughs> wish me luck on that. If you have enjoyed them and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help. Pushing the like button of the video helps as well. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell. Leave a comment, especially if I've made a little misplay here and there. Let me know, as this will help myself and others playing the game. Besides, I enjoy getting the comments and reading them. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you very much. One last thing, if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well now you can, you can buy the channel a coffee. And those coffees go towards helping the channel to continue to upload new content. If you wish to check that out, I shall leave a link in the description and thank you. So until next time, as always, you take care and goodbye.